In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create these particular candy canes. We're going to make them procedurally so that you can change their thickness, their shape, and of course their textures as and when you please, along with getting different textures when you duplicate the items. So without any further ado, let's start right off. We're going to take the default cube, tap X, and delete it. Then we're going to add in a mesh cylinder. Now this cylinder is going to be our candy cane. So we're going to scale it down by 0.4 and then scale it on the z-axis by something like 20. This will be our total length of the candy cane, including the curve. We'll curve it later on. Now we're going to tab to go into edit mode or just change to edit mode from here and then hit Control R to get loop cuts and then type in a pretty large number, something like 50 and then hit enter twice. So that way you get subdivisions along the curve as well. Once you get that done, we can go ahead to the modifiers tab and add in a subdivision surface modifier right here. And we can increase the levels to two or maybe three. Similarly, in case you don't want the edges to be rounded off as it is in this particular case, you can tab to go into edit mode, select faces by clicking this, alt shift or shift alt select this to get the entire face and then just hit E, maybe move it up a little bit, maybe 0 0.01 and then hit enter. Similarly, you can do the same thing for the bottom in case you don't want it to be round. Alt shift click all of the entire edge loop, then just E 0 0.01 or in this case, since you want to move it down, make sure that you hit minus make sure that it, you have the z-axis selected and then hit enter. So now when you actually tab out of edit mode, you get the shape as such. Now the next thing that we want to do is add in the texture so that when we add the future modifiers, you actually look at how the texture is changing so that we can add the modifiers accordingly. So let's bring our cursor to the joint of these two windows, click and drag to open a new window. Now we can go ahead, click this button and change the editor type to the shader editor. Tap N to remove this side panel. Now we have to give it a new texture so we can go ahead to the material properties and click new material. So once we click that, we get the new material. Now let's go ahead and change from the solid view to the rendered view by clicking this button over here. Now that we're in the rendered view, we can go ahead and add our texture accordingly. So let's shift A and search for the wave texture, select it, and then attach the color to the base color. Now you can see that the wave texture creates these lines, but they're too tightly packed. So we can go ahead, go to the scale and then change the scale to something small, like maybe one. Now that you have the scale as well, we can add some more variation to this by connecting another wave texture in between these. So let's just take this wave texture, shift D and place it in over there. Now you can see you get variation within there and you can increase the distortion quite a bit so that the variation actually changes and reduce the scale so that it's not so prominent. Maybe something like 0.4. The next thing that we have to do is create a color ramp so that we have control over what the colors are because right now it's just black and white. So let's shift these to the side and then shift A and search for color ramp and take the color ramp and just place it here. Now take the black and change the black all the way to red. Keep the white as white but Clearly, we want some more white, so let's take this white and just drag it to the side. Maybe take this red and drag this red to this side as well, till we get something that looks fine. Now, maybe the distortion is a little too much, so let's reduce the distortion to something like 3, and there we get our texture. So now we actually require this entire thing to twist, because that's how candy canes look. They, the texture should wrap around. So in order to do that, let's go back to the modifiers and add our next modifier, which is going to be a simple deform modifier. Now this simple deform modifier is going to be kept at twist, but we're going to change the axis from X to Z. As soon as you do this, you can change this angle and you can see how the texture changes as well. So right now at an angle of 90, you can see how the texture is starting to wrap around. So we can just go ahead and make this 360 degrees so that it goes one entire rotation. That looks a lot better. Now, again, I feel like there's a little too much detail going on over here. So let's reduce the distortion even more. Oops, let's make the distortion just two. And let's go ahead and reduce the red. 
and bring the white a little more to the side. Maybe change the scale of this a bit lower to 0.4. So now that you have the colors going around, you can play around with this as you please. You can always change the phase offset as well over here to get some more variation. The phase offset over here as well could be changed. And all of these gives different variations. So we can keep that at zero. In order to have different variations when you make new copies automatically, what you can do is you can add in an object info node similar to the video that's explained right over there. Then add in a math node, set it to multiply and give it some large value like 1000 over here. Then change the random into the first value and then select this and put that into the face offset. So once we have that selected into the face offset, we put it into the first wave offset because we felt like it. But now when we shift the X and create a new version, you'll see that you'll never get the same version again. You get a di slightly different variation. Shift the X again, and you see you get another variation that's different from the first two. So like that, every time you duplicate, you'll get a different variation, which seems more like a realistic candy cane because you never have two candy canes with the exact same design. So now we can go ahead and delete the extras. The next thing that we have to do is have this candy cane actually turn and give it that candy cane shape. So let's change the cylinder and call it candy cane. Now let's hide the candy cane so that we can work on what's going to give it the shape. So let's shift A, add in a curve, Bezier curve. Then we can tap to go into edit mode. And if we actually hit seven to go into the top view, you can actually see what the curve looks like. So the curve consists of two points, this vertex and this vertex. And when you select a vertex, you get two other handles. Right now, this vertex is turned by 45 degrees, which is why you get this curve. So what we can do is we can rotate that on the z-axis by another 45 degrees so that it's vertical. And then we can take this and also rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees, except we have to make sure that it's minus 90 degrees so that it turns in the same direction that the other one is turned and then hit enter. Now, this side is larger than this side, so we can take this, scale it, make sure to hit control so that it, main, it snaps to grid and then just make it to the same size. So now that we have the same size, we can go ahead and manipulate these to get whatever shape we want. So if we select both of them and we scale them on the x-axis, it becomes wider like that. And if we scale them on the y-axis, it becomes more stretched like that. So what we can do is we can also just scale it to get uniform scale on both sides. So my preference right now would be to scale it on the x-axis by a little bit, let's say this much and then just scale it on the y-axis till it becomes nice and round. This seems like it's nice and round. Now we can take this particular curve, go to the curve properties over here, and then make the resolution a really high number, something like 100. So that way we get a nice smooth curve instead of that jagged curve that we had before. Now we can go ahead and change the name to candy cane curve, or we'll call it CC curve for now. Now we can go ahead and unhide the candy cane by selecting the eyeball button over there. And we can also tap to go back into object mode. Now let's select the candy cane and add in a new modifier. This modifier is going to be a curve modifier. And we're going to go ahead, change the deform axis from X to Z. If in case Z does not work for you, Z or Z does not work for you, you can go ahead and change that accordingly. But in our case, since we made this on the Z axis, the Z axis is the axis that we want. Then change the curve object to the CC curve. We can select that from here or select it over here, or we can use the drop down menu, but let's just go ahead and select the CC curve. So once you select it, you see the curve or the object curves along the CC curve. In case you see that this area is too much, you can just grab it on the Z axis. Remember the curve axis is Z and then just move it about and you can change it to what you want it to be. So I want the candy cane to be this much, but right now I feel like the candy cane is a bit too long. So in order to change its length, I have to scale it on the Z axis and then just reduce it. It's the same curve axis that I have to reduce it on. And then once I like the overall height, I can grab it on the Z axis again and just place it in. So right now I feel like the candy cane has a little bit too much of white and less red. So I can go ahead and just reduce the white and increase the red over here as well. Or I could go ahead and change the scaling down here 
and the distortion down here as well, just to get slight variations. So now that I have the candy cane created with this variation, I've settled with a scale of 0 0.4 on the first one and a distortion of 4.6, and here a scale of 0 0.6 and a distortion of 0 0.4 as something that I genuinely like. We can go ahead and actually reduce the roughness quite a bit because candy canes tend to be pretty smooth. We can always add in a little bit of a clear coat as well, and we can mess around with these settings as we please according to our requirements. But for now, that gives us the candy cane. If you want to duplicate this candy cane, remember that you cannot just shift D just the candy cane because the candy cane has to be with respect to the curve. So when you duplicate it, you can see how it's getting distorted as we move it around. So we obviously don't want this sort of a distortion to occur when we duplicate it. So in order to duplicate a candy cane correctly, make sure that you have both the candy cane and the candy cane curve selected with both of them selected then hit shift d and then you can go ahead and move them the same thing occurs if you want to actually move the candy cane on any axis or anything of that sort you have to make sure that you select both the curve and the ca corresponding candy cane or the candy cane and the corresponding curve and then rotate it like rotating it on the z-axis and so on as long as both of them are selected you can perform any of the operations but if both of them are not selected there will be other deformations that you might not necessarily require the last thing is that if you want to change the actual thickness of this, then you can scale it on both the axes except for the Z axis. So hit Shift S after hitting scale. And then when you scale it up or down, you will see that it becomes fatter or thinner. So with that, you'll be able to create candy canes of whatever dimensions you require. And every time you duplicate the candy cane, make sure that you have the curve selected as well and duplicate it. By hitting shift d you will get a different variation on the curve so like that you can actually get as many candy canes as you require with whatever settings you require as well so i hope you learned something and i hope that you can actually use this in your own projects as and when you please merry christmas to everyone and have a happy and great new year this is going to be the last tutorial that i post for 2022 and my next video will be coming out in 2023 right in Jan, where we'll be posting quite a lot of tutorials. So be sure to subscribe, stay tuned. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section and I will respond to them. Until next time, stay creative.